What's up everybody? It's your girl Tamika. Just really want to come and have a serious conversation with you guys. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you to, again, all my new subscribers, all my old subscribers who have been with me and hanging in with me since day one. Um, and I really enjoyed you know these videos that I've been doing um, I even enjoyed the little pop-up videos where we can just laugh and talk and have some kiki on all the celebrity gossip you know I'm enjoying sniffing and sipping as my boys James Caldwell and um, Sean Bradley says I love it and also shout out to my girl Squeaky Jones you know, and even you, Lady Mika, because you know what? Y'all all came up with the sip and sniff. And I really enjoyed being able to do this and just pop up and tell y'all what I think and just let it rip in the comments. Really enjoyed that. But I really want to take the time out and want to make sure I had the time to dedicate to this story about Nate Parker. Because to me, it's beyond, you know, celebrity gossip. It's beyond spilling the tea. Because when you start talking about rape, and what I perceive to maybe have been date rape, another conversation needs to be had. A conversation of awareness. You know what I mean? So, but before I get into my thoughts, I want to read you guys the article. And this article is actually coming from BET.com. Okay? So, let's get into it. Hold on. Okay. It says, Nate Parker's name elevated to household status when he secured an unprecedented deal with Fox Spotlight for $17.6 million for his slave biopic, Birth of a Nation. Now, let me tell you guys, I first heard of Nate Parker when I saw Beyond the Lights. I loved Beyond the Lights, um, saw it twice at the movies, thought he was fine as all get out, and, you know, he has this huge deal, like, it's... Like, this Birth of the Nation is going to be huge for him. They're already predicting Oscar nominations, and, you know, they're comparing him to the next Denzel. So, this is definitely his time. And when things like this happen, when big projects are in the mix, or when it's anticipated that a certain celebrity is about to move to the next level, it's not uncommon for social media, for, you know, media outlets like, you know, TMZ or, you know, newspapers and magazines to dig up old dirt. It's just unfortunate that his dirt is really quite disturbing. So let's continue on. With newfound mainstream fame and anticipation over his Nat Turner film, his 1998 rape case was dug out of the closet by major media outlets. Again, that's to be expected. According to reports, when Nate Parker was a student at Penn State University, him and roommate Jean Celestine was accused of raping a woman. Then 18, she was unconscious at their apartment, according to court documents. She also claimed the two harassed and stalked her following the accusations. Both men maintained that the sex was consensual. Now, I have a question. Now, stay with me and correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but this is what I think may have happened. Can just from what I'm gathering, okay, she said she passed out. 
and basically they raped her while she was passed out in their apartment. Is it possible? And trust me, if this is true, any of this is true, it's very disturbing because no, I want to preface this by saying no means no. I don't care what content, content it's in, okay? But what I'm thinking is maybe in reality, because you know how it's, you know, your, your side, your story. Well, actually, it's your side, their side, and then there's the truth. So what I'm thinking maybe happened is a little bit. Both, both of their stories are kind of true. I do believe that she came over there, got to partying with them, drinking and doing whatnot, and things probably went a little too far, and then she decided to stop. You know how you in the midst of something, and then you're like, you know what, no, this doesn't feel right, and you tell them no. But they decide to keep going because, like, y'all basically in the heat of the moment. And I'm thinking maybe she, you know, was drinking, partying. And at first it probably sounded like a good idea. Yeah, I'll sleep with these two dudes. And the reason why I think it was a threesome is because not only was Nate Parker involved in the case, but also the roommate. So I'm thinking maybe it could have been a threesome. And when things get hot and heavy, she changed her mind, which is definitely her prerogative to do so. And I think that he said it was consensual because maybe the way she was saying stop, because you know how, I mean, let's just be real. We're, we're all adults here. You know how when sometimes you're in the heat of the moment and you be like, <laughs> stop, don't do that, stop, don't do that. And you really don't mean it and you want to really keep going. Maybe they perceived it to be that. And even if that's the case, I still maintain no means no. But maybe they didn't think that she really meant, you know, to stop. Maybe they took it as, you know, she was being coy. You know, being, playing hard to get. Even though that's no excuse. But I really kind of think that's what happened and how this all got misconstrued. But let's keep reading. Because Parker had previously engaged in consensual oral sex with the victim, he was acquitted of all charges. Celestine, who has a writing credit on Birth of a Nation, was convicted, although the case was later appealed in 2005 in a 2005 retrial. The victim declined to testify again, and Celestine conviction was then overturned. The victim later sued the university for failure to protect her from harassment. She won a $17,500 settlement. So to me, it got to be something to this. For her to have won a settlement, they had probable cause. Okay. Let's keep going. Because this is not looking good. Okay. Parker, now 36, sat down with Variety and described the experience as painful but something he had moved on from. How do you move on from that? 17 years ago, now this is his statement to Vanity Fair, and I'm doing this for all the people who've heard about this case, but that have not read the actual articles. So here's his statement. 17 years ago, I experienced a very painful moment in my life, Parker told Variety. It resulted in it being litigated. I was cleared of it. That's that. 17 years later, I'm a filmmaker. I have a family. I have five beautiful daughters. I have a lovely wife. I get it. The reality is I can't relive 17 years ago. All I can do now, all I can do is be the best man I can be now. We're going to talk about that later. I just want to get through this article. Okay. But with those words came a slew of questions. 
with reporters digging further into the story. Many accused him of being insensitive to the unnamed victim and the struggle she faced. On Tuesday, the Hollywood Reporter broke the news that his accuser was dead. The woman whose name has not been released committed suicide back in 2012 by swallowing over 200 sleeping pills. Her brother told Vanity Fair that following the case, she became detached from reality, adding that he believed that he believes Parker get off on a technicality. Still, there is no technical proof that her death was connected to the trial. According to court documents, she also suffered from major depression disorder with psychotic features. Although one of those features was cited as being T, uh, PTSD due to physical and sexual abuse. The reports of her death were shocking, not only to the world, but also to Nate Parker himself, who went on to Facebook to address the controversy. Now, here is his Facebook status. Hold on. Okay, here he goes. These are my words, written from my heart, not, not filtered through a third party gaze. Please read these separate from any platform I may have, but from me as a fellow human being. I write to you all devastated. Over the last several days, a part of my past, my arrest, trial, and acquittal on charges of sexual assault has become a focal point for media coverage, social media, speculation, and industry conversation. I understand why so many are concerned and rightfully have questions. These issues of a woman's right to be safe of men and women engaging in healthy relationships are extremely important to talk about, however difficult, and more personally as a father, a husband, a brother, and many and, and, and oh, sorry, and a man of deep faith. I understand how many how um, I understand how much confusion and pain this incident has had on many and the important and, and most importantly, the young woman who who was involved. Okay, let's see. Hmm. Sorry, Emma. Here we go. I myself just learned that the young woman ended her own life several years ago, and I am filled with profound sorrow. I can't tell you how hard it is to hear this. I cannot, nor do I want to ignore the pain she endured during and following our consensual, I mean, following our trial. While I maintain my innocence that the encounter was um, a beautiful, wait, basically, oh, and Miss Buick, and Miss Buick, look. This word right here, Amos Buickly, consensual, there are things more important than the law. There is morality. No one who calls himself a man or uh, no, no one who calls himself a man of faith should even be in that situation. As a 36-year-old father of daughters and a person of faith, I look back on that time as a teenager and can say without hesitation that I should have used more wisdom. I look back on that time, my indignant attitude and my and my heartfelt mission to prove my innocence with eyes that are more wise with time. I see now that I may not have shown enough empathy even as I thought even as I fought to clear my name. Empathy for the young woman and empathy for the seriousness of the situation. I put myself and others in. I cannot change what has happened. I cannot bring this young woman who was someone else's daughter, someone else's sister, someone else's mother back to life. 
I have changed so much since 19. I've grown and matured in so many ways and still have more learning and growth to do. I have tried to conduct myself in a way that honors my entire community and will continue to do, to do this to the best of my ability. All of that said, I also know that there are words that neither time nor words can heal. Oh, sorry. There are wounds that neither time nor words can heal. I have never run from this period in my life. I have never, and I never ever will. Please don't take this as an attempt to solve this with a statement. I urge you only to have, uh, only to take, only to take, accept this letter in my attempt to Okay, let me reread this because I think he got the typo, y'all. I urge you to, I urge you only to take, accept this letter as my response to the moment, Nate. So, yeah, it was a typo. Basically, he wants you to accept this letter as a response to the moment. Okay. Almost done. Fox. Fox Searchlight has said that they are aware of the accusation but has yet to comment further on whether it will affect the film's release. Time would tell if this skeleton haunts the entire reputation of the film and Nate's career as an actor, producer, and leader going forward. Okay, now I know that took a lot of time to go through the article, but I just felt for people who have not read the article who do not know all the details to be informed when they clicked on this video. Y'all, this is a sad situation. Um, and I really, I don't know what to say. Because part of me does feel like It's so hard, y'all. I do feel as though before he found out that she passed, he probably was feeling as though, you know, y'all just trying to bring up my past and that ain't the man I am now. He was trying to kind of, like, distance himself from the situation. I don't know necessarily sweeping up under the rug is the right word for it that's why I said distance himself because he wanted he acknowledged it but he didn't it seemed as though he didn't want to be like you know like dwell on it he wanted to acknowledge it and just be like you know okay yeah it happened I'm not that man and I can't change it now me as a woman when he said I can't change what happened 18 years ago I want to smack him in the face because you are not in that woman's shoes, okay? Because however it went down, she felt violated. And for you to lack empathy, because now I get it. I get that your back is against the wall. We talking about your freedom. This could ruin your whole life. Get convicted of sexual assault can ruin your entire life. So I get your anger. I get your lack of empathy for her in a sense of that, you know, this could ruin your whole life. I get that. But also, she had to have felt some type of way to go that far. To go that far to not only go to trial, but to appeal and then get a settlement from the school. You know what I'm saying? She took a lot of steps, okay, to fight for justice. So, and you don't do that when you just trying to you know just accuse somebody of something that they didn't do you know what i'm saying so in some type of way in some form of fashion she felt violated and maybe if you would have shown some sympathy or some empathy maybe things would have been different maybe she wouldn't even fought as hard to seek litiga lit litigation if you would have set up there and address that maybe you went a little too far maybe it might not have been technically rape 
but you were doing stuff that you weren't supposed to. I can read between the lines, Nate Parker. Yeah, you fine and all, but I can read between the lines. I'm a journalist, and I do think some things went down that you're not proud of. And if you would have just sat down there and talked to her, and, you know, human being to human being, then maybe things would have worked out different. Because whatever happened left that woman emotionally scarred. And yeah, I understand that she had mental issues and it's been documented. But a lot of people with mental issues, they only need one thing to drop them over the edge. Because they are already on the edge. But it only takes one thing. To drive them over the edge. That's like with people who have bipolar. A lot of times, bipolar is brought on by a traumatic situation. They're already bipolar, but I'm talking about to like really have them like, you know, hearing voices and really being off kilter is brought on by a traumatic event. Like, I remember doing research on the actress Maya Campbell. She said when her mom died, it set off her bipolar disorder, even though she'd already been by diagnosed as being bipolar. So, I'm saying that to say, like, she, yes, she probably she already had mental illness. We know that, but this situation did not help anything. You being cold-hearted and you guys just so fucking about clearing her, clearing your name, and not thinking about what this woman went through. Put her in a really bad situation. And we as people, as grown people, need to do two things. Number one, us as women, because we do this. We do sometimes play coy and be like, <laughs> no, stop. I mean it. Stop. 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 And you're just doing that just so, you know, because you like the little rough or whatever. And it's okay. You can like it rough. But I'm saying don't necessarily play coy. Don't say stop if you really don't want him to stop. You can say pull my hair or give it to me. Whatever you like. However you like. But don't play coy. And men, you have to understand. I don't care how many situations where you've been getting down with your girl and she tell you to stop. And the next thing you know, y'all have mind-blowing sex. Okay? You have to understand. No means no. Okay? And once you accept that and not try to go any further or not try to get in your head that she could be playing hard to get, people stuff like this wouldn't happen. Because I really do think on both their parts, it was some fault there. And it, it, it this could have been avoided. On his on his on his side. No means no. So if she told you no, leave her alone. And if she was playing coy or, shoot, if she got drunk and in the middle decided not to do it, you got to be careful of your surroundings. And I know it's college. And that's the thing, like, I've been there, y'all. I've been there 18, 19 years old, hanging out in college, drinking, doing all sorts of shit that you are not supposed to be doing. You know what I mean? And ending up in these situations because you done got too drunk and you done passed out and, you know, or shoot, you ain't passed out, you just got too drunk and you just, you just sucked the nigga that you wouldn't have otherwise fucked. That, why you think there's so many one night stands throughout college? Let's just be real. So, this is just a really sad situation because this girl has lost her life. She's lost her life because she was forever emotionally scarred, emotionally scarred from that situation. And I do think now that she lost her life and now that Nate Parker realizes that she committed suicide, I do feel like as a man, he's rethinking things because you do. You do grow and you learn. But I just hate that this woman had to die for him to see the error of his ways of him just kind of being, well, him just distancing himself from the situation. 
I mean, because maybe if you would have been a little bit more empathetic, it could have been a different outcome on both ends. You know what I mean? I just hate that it took make them find out that she took her own life for him to realize the severity of everything. And I do understand that at the time he was fighting for his freedom. But she went through something too. You guys, be careful out there, okay? Until next time, peace and love. Oh, please don't forget to write down in the comments what you guys think about this whole situation. Let's get a discussion going because it is a discussion that needs to be had. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to take my time with this video. Because again, it's not about celebrity gossip. This is something that happens each and every day with our young adults, okay? This conversation needs to be had, especially throughout colleges. We need to have these discussions. So get down in the comments. Let's talk. Bye.